Hey everybody, in this lesson we're going to talk about Lewis diagrams. Now, Lewis diagrams are really simplified versions of our Bohr model. And what makes them special is that they only worry about the electrons that, in a sense, matter for bonding and reacting. So what are Lewis dot diagrams? Well, since they only, they only show the valence electron. Because due to them bonding. All right, so they show them because of their bonding. And what we do is we draw only the valence electrons. But what we do is to draw them, we put element symbol in the middle. And then we put valence electrons around it. So what does that look like? Well, let's look at sodium. So first thing at first, we gotta look at sodium. We put its symbol in the middle. And then we look at how many valence electrons does sodium have. So we open our periodic table. And we know that all the alkali metals have one valence electron. So what do we do? We put one valence electron up top, and that's it. Sodium is done. So much quicker, much easier. So then let's look at our next example. We have magnesium chloride. This Cl2 means that there are two chlorines, and this is an ionic compound. How do we know? Because magnesium is a metal, and chlorine is a nonmetal. Because that's ionic, which means the electrons get transferred, not shared, not like a covalent compound. So what does it look like? So first off, let's draw magnesium. Magnesium belongs to the alkaline earth metals, right here, which means it has two valence electrons. So we draw its two valence electrons like this. Then we draw chlorine. Chlorine, we actually did an example of this in the Bohr model. Chlorine has seven valence electrons, and there are two of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we do another one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what do we need? Well, magnesium wants to get rid of these two electrons. So who does it get rid of it to? The chlorines. So it transfers these electrons to chlorine, and we get this compound. Magnesium lost two electrons, so it becomes a positive two charge. So we show that with square brackets and a plus two. Chlorine gained electron each. It now has eight valence electrons. So when it does that, it becomes a minus one. And there's two of them. This is a much faster method than Bohr model because in Bohr models, you're drawing all the other electrons which are actually not needed in this case. So that is our compound, magnesium chloride. Again, notice the charges. Plus two, and we have two minus ones. This is still neutral. But what happens if we draw fluorine times two? Which means, really, it is a covalent bond because this is a covalent bonded element. We actually give a special name for when an element bonds to itself in nature. We call this a diatomic. Di means two, so it's two atoms bonded together. So let's draw these bands, uh, these Lewis structures. So fluorine actually has also seven valence electrons is right there. So it's gonna look like that. And we're gonna draw another fluorine, because F2, like so. Now what's gonna happen is these two electrons are going to, because covalent, share. And when they share, this is what they're gonna look like. So we're gonna draw fluorine looks like this. And now, as you see, the two bonding electrons in the middle are shared. Another way to draw this is drawing those two electrons in the middle as a stick or dash to show that they are bonded together in that format. So that's the other way of drawing F2. 
So that is what happens in covalent. What happens if we have different compounds like Cl2? With Cl2 here, you're going to draw carbon. Carbon has four valence electrons. And oxygen has six valence electrons. So we're going to have two of these oxygens. So what's going to happen? Well, in this case, this carbon really wants to get rid of these four electrons. And it will go like here, oxygen, take two and take another one because oxygen's going to need two. And this oxygen over here is going to do the same thing. It's going to be like, take that one and this one, take that one. But we know that both of these are non-metal, so they're not going to take. Instead, they got to share. But how does that work if they have to share? Well, in this case, you can have not just two electrons sharing, but in this case, four electrons share. So four electrons can actually share between these carbons and oxygen. So instead of forming one bond between each of them, you actually form two bonds. And this is what it looks like. So you're going to have two sets of electrons, this set and this set, formed into a bond. So you're going to get two bonds with an oxygen with still four electrons around it. And with this oxygen right here, you're also going to get two bonds with another oxygen around it. And this is the Lewis structure for CO2. As always, make sure you keep yourself safe and healthy, and I'll see you soon.